Yo, what is up guys? For today we're talking about Destiny 2 now specifically we're gonna be looking at the dungeon from the well the new DLC. Uh, season of the arrival. So it's called Prophecy. It's amazing. I love it. Real quick, I So if you guys don't know, if you guys are new, I ended up doing the Pit of Heresy dungeon by myself the first time it came out. Cause I had no my, my clanmates weren't like available. And I ended up just doing it by myself, and it was fucking rough. Let me tell you guys, that shit was rough. Like, it took me a while to, like, learn the mechanics. It just took me a while in general. Not only that, but it was the fun of, like, not knowing anything and figuring it out yourself. I highly recommend whenever you have the chance to do that. It's really great. But I joined another clan this season because I just got tired of not having people to play with and i asked a few people like oh can you guys help me through the dungeon because i haven't done it yet and i'd rather do the dungeon first have that awe moment and not let it be ru ruined by me getting angry so they were like yeah cool we'll help you they're really cool i love them uh they gave me permission to record because i asked them but it's really funny because i went into this dungeon expecting Expecting it to be better than Pit of Heresy. I know that's horrible, but that was just my thought process. And I got to tell you guys, I am not disappointed. If anything, I am surprised how good it was. Like, like not not even kidding, not even joking. Way better than Pit of Heresy. Pit of Heresy, don't get me wrong. I love it. It's one of my favorite dungeons because I can run it easily now. I say easily, but I can run it. But this dungeon, man... It was it was wild. So let's start to talk about the. Um, it's gonna be kind of like a guide, kind of, not a full guide. I'm gonna do a full guide when I do do it by myself, which is just thinking about doing it alone kind of stresses me out. So we have the first encounter. Well, technically the first encounter is like you learning the mechanics of like the dark motes and the light motes. If you don't know, this is basically Gambit the dungeon and. It's a really cool mechanic. It's basically moving the the shadows and the light in certain ways to where you have to kill the enemy whether you want it to be light or dark. You have to kill them in either in the light or the dark. It was really cool when I find out when, when I like figured it out. And I love that aspect. The whole that's the whole the spiel of this of this uh, dungeon. You know how in Pit of Heresy it's the sword and the sword kind of acts like rock, paper, scissors against some certain enemies. It's kind of the same thing here where you have to kill certain enemies to get either dark motes or light motes. And from there, just bank them to where the lights are or the darkness is. So it's really, it's pretty simple. The only thing is that's really crazy is the fact that obviously the light level difference shit really hurts. Not only that, but... Honestly, just the light level, I could see the boomers being really annoying, but for me, I'm a hunter, so I was usually going invis. If I wasn't going invis, then I was just, you know, being a speedy boy. But I did die a lot. I died more than I really should have. I felt so embarrassed. I was like telling them, I was like, I promise I'm not this bad. Like, I don't know what the fuck is happening. And I can't wait to run it by myself. I am light level uh, 1050. The something I don't remember like exactly off the top of my head, but it's really great. I recommend people do this. It's amazing. Not only that, you get two weapon ar or two weapon, fuck, two armor ornaments and the Ikelos weapons as well. If I remember correctly, I ended up getting the hand cannon twice, which pissed me off. But I ended up getting like what armor at the end, and it was I, I love it because I wanted that armor. Uh, I'll do a, a separate review on the armor and the weapons themselves, but overall, reward-wise, amazing. You have two weapon, two two armor sets, and three weapons, if I remember correctly, that are just exclusive to this dungeon, which is great because the only reason I hate Pit of Heresy is because there's no real reason to run it unless you're just running it for powerful gear. Uh, Pit of Heresy just does not have any unique loot, nor does the, uh, what was it called? The Spire of Star- no, that's a dun- that's a raid. The- the other dungeon from- 
from Forsaken, you don't get any anything exclusive there as well. So, but the only the good thing is that Pit of, Pit of Heresy, if you do it flawless solo, you get an emblem. Same thing with this one though, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So, the first encounter is just teaching you the light and the darkness mechanics. The second encounter is where shit gets really rough. <clears throat> this is where I actually stopped trying to like do it because it was really hard. Uh, you're gonna see a, a phalanx guy. You're gonna have to kill him. The only way to kill him is you have to get uh, dark light and and light. Basically, you have to get the motes for them, and you have to bank them twice for, for each uh, light and darkness. It sounds easy, but then you realize that. Three Boomer Knights are out, and then a bunch of, uh, I forget what they're called off the top of my head, but they're taking assholes that can, like, uh, separate and basically fuck your life up. Not only that, but once you're doing DPS to the Phalanx, you'll have goblins come out. I think they're goblins. You'll have goblins come out that will shield the, the boss as well. I don't know how I would do this. I don't know if it's just one, one damage phase or... Because we killed it in one phase, but I don't know if it's one phase or it's like a certain amount of time and then he gets the shield again, then you have to do it all over again. Obviously, I'm going to be doing a different review and uh, basically everything else on the solo flawless one. But on this one, it's just a very casual, like, this is what happened. So, for the, se for the third encounter, we're basically in a desert and you see places that are going to leave. So, like, Mars, Titan etc those places you see like little place like little places that, that like that like right now on the screen you probably see uh the the mars location and i was like well what the fuck is this and they were like oh yeah this is, these are the planets that are leaving and i was like that's cool i want like i want to learn the lore of this it's so cool here it's just go to a door i'll probably show it up on the screen right now but the next area is actually something I don't even like don't know because they were like telling me what to do so this is not a complete guide I do apologize but essentially they were like telling me which either darkness or light to get and they were looking at walls again this is not like a full-blown review or a full-blown guide it's more of a review slash guide of what I did so if you do want a guide, I will, I'm more than happy to actually do one when I do the solo flawless because that way I can give you a more in-depth re review. But ultimately, this one was a lot of fun. Basically, you're in a you're in a square, and once you are done with that room, then you actually rotate into another side of the room. I really love this. This was awesome. I loved it a lot. I think. I would have loved it a little more if it was a little bit more organic. And what I mean by that is if, let's say, I bank the light, right when I bank the light, the whole the whole room shifts. I would have lost my mind if it was that, but I still lost my mind over the fact that we switched rooms, so that was cool. But again, awesome room. I love this room a lot. One of my favorite rooms. The next area is going to be the sparrow racing one that people saw and I thought this part was especially really cool because it's so fucking weird. It's it's huge. Not only that but there's secret chests here and there. I like I said, full guide's going to be on the next one. This is just like my review of like how it was and whatnot and like small things of what I did. But it was great. Uh I loved it a lot. Like I said, cannot cannot recommend this dungeon a, like enough. Bungie do, do a great job with their dungeons. Like their dungeons are fucking good. And then the next area is going to be actually the boss fight if I remember correctly. <clears throat> if you guys hear clicking, I'm going through my video right now just to make sure that I'm not speaking out of my ass. Yeah, the next room is the boss room. Honestly, awesome boss. I love the fact that they made it not only did they make it a cap uh, taken captain, but they didn't just make it a regular taken captain. They made his his like smoke thing that every captain does. They took that away, but they gave him they gave it a teleportation instead of like oh I can't see and I take a fuck ton of damage. You, it's so cool. You're in this room 
you have to like keep going up to him because if you don't you get dark entropy and if you, you if it gets enough enough stacks then you die and i love it this is dope i fucking this is what the things i fuck with dude this is cool this is a a really unique mechanic so obviously when he teleports you you have to run right back at him because your dark entropy starts to go up like i said dark entropy enough you'll die so once you like once a timer goes up on the boss damage phase you go into another room where basically you have to do the same thing you you were doing in the dungeon which is collect moats dunk them and then once you dunk them you go back to the boss area i will say though this area is a little finicky not just this area actually let me say this real quick the whole idea of being in darkness or light to to like get motes of light or motes of darkness it's a great idea i love it bungie dope as dope 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 love it the only thing is it, it can be a little finicky but other than that i like the idea it's great so like i said you have to bank all of the darkness towers and light towers and once you bank those you go back to the boss area and from there just do enough dps the dude is chonky as fuck but we were also under level we were like what was it i was 10 or 10 40 i think which meant that at the boss i was like 10 levels under so i was doing like not the best damage but well, i mean i wasn't doing shitty damage but it, i could have been doing better but once you complete the boss you get your reward and then you get a chest at the end i don't know if the the my chest piece that I got from this was because I haven't, I did like, that was my first run. So maybe you just get the chest at the end. But the great thing is I have heard, don't quote me on this if I'm wrong, but I heard that it's actually farmable. So you could just keep farming this over and over to get like all the armor if you want or all the weapons if you want. And I gotta say, man, I, I thoroughly enjoyed this shit. It was a lot of fun, guys. I highly recommend you guys do the dungeon uh that's pretty much it i like i said i i hope i didn't say this was gonna be a fucking guide because i don't have enough knowledge of the dungeon to make an actual like dungeon uh guide but it was great i loved it a lot i'm probably just gonna put like oh this is a dungeon review so that way people are not like that's a shitty guide i'm like eh. i don't want it to be a guide if i did say in the beginning i'm dumb i'll probably just edit that shit out but yeah, let me know what you guys think about the dungeon. If you if you guys have done it, if you guys want to see that solo flawless dungeon guide thing, let me know in the comments below. I'm still I'm still gonna do it. I don't know why I'm asking, but I'm still gonna do it. <laughs> let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you guys want to follow me on my social media outlets, links are in the description. Links are in the description below. Thank you everyone for the constant support. I really do appreciate it. Be careful out there, guys. You know what's happening in the world. And other than that, I will see you guys later.